Alright, I don't usually make videos like this. I tend to just stick to doing drone reviews and flight footage and don't get involved in anything political. But overall, I haven't seen enough drone channels talking about it and I wanted to share my perspective as someone who's been doing this for around three years now. The United States is about to pass a bill called the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018. The bill is going to change the landscape of the RC hobby in general. And I say is because it is going to pass. Initially, I was going to make a video encouraging you to write your senator to vote no regarding the bill. And I still do think that everyone should go ahead and express their thoughts regarding this to their representatives, but let's be realistic. This is going to pass. It's part of a much larger bill for the FAA, and no one's going to reject it. So we, what we need to do at this point is we need to think about what this means for the future and how do we stop ourselves from losing further rights. If you want a full breakdown of the bill and how large it is and all that, you can watch a video by 51 Drones. And I also linked an additional analysis by Bruce at the XJet channel. Both are excellent videos, and if you really want to even learn more, I highly recommend those. So let me briefly just bring you up to speed. For decades, the United States has enjoyed the provision of a law known as Section 336. This exempts model aircraft from new FAA lawmaking, period. There's really no country in the world who has implemented such a law or a special law for model aircraft. So up until now, our freedom as hobbyists has been really, really great. With the Reauthorization Act, that law will be repealed and what comes with it is extremely concerning for the future. There's a lot that bothers me personally, but I'm going to touch on some key points. So first, it makes beyond visual line of sights, beyond visual line of sight flights for hobbyists illegal. It will make it a law. An observer will be legally required for hobby flight using fat shark goggles or similar for FPV. And that's because goggles are not considered line of sight. The effects of this are drastic. Legally, you're technically not even allowed to fly on your own property with goggles on unless you have someone to spot you with this law. So if you're in a wide open field or empty park area, you really cannot be alone. You know, it's great to be able to fly with friends, but it's really not always possible. People will break this law, I assure you, um, but unlike before, it will now carry real potential penalties if a police officer or the FAA wants to come after you to make a statement. You know, there's something to be said when something you've been doing legally for years and never had any problems, and now suddenly it's illegal. But let's step back into reality for a second. Who's going to really enforce this? Well. Uh, the police cannot enforce the FAA's laws, but they have the ability to step in and report you to the FAA and get that to them. So it is going to start with the police officer for the most part. And in my experience, the police are not concerned with drones. However, if you do find yourself in an altercation with a police officer on a power trip against them, and there have been plenty of incidents like that, you might find yourself in trouble for doing something as simply, uh, simple as flying alone, you know, in an empty-ish park with goggles. Now, since now you've actually broken the law. Before, it was sort of just a rule or a guideline, but no, you've actually broken the law now. So that's just something to think about. Now, you might need to look over your shoulder a little more and be cautious about what you post online, too, that may incriminate yourself, even if you're not doing anything wrong in practice or, or endangering anyone. So just to be clear, I'm not talking about people who fly near airports or do stupid things like that. I'm just talking about the everyday hobbyist, a size in a park, field, or whatever, has a safe flight like the many thousands that are conducted every single day and will continue to be. I don't know if it's going to be a civil fine or if you can get tagged criminally for this by any of this to the FAA. All of that is still being, you know, written and, and worked out. The legislation also lets the FAA implement individual model registration for recreational models. So let's say you have a model under 250 grams. They can arbitrarily create an exception for said model if they need to. And not only that, the FAA may revoke a vendor's rights to sell a drone if it's not in compliance with their standards. So they're going to have to keep track of every drone that can enter the country and then apply rules accordingly. 
This is probably only going to affect major manufacturers, but this is some really far-reaching stuff. And also calls to question things like self-builds now, because if there's going to be set standards for drones, how is that going to work? I think this part's going to be really, really tough. Again, it does exist, though. It's in the legislation. Um, major players will probably have to deal with it. And it will certain, certainly scare some manufacturers who perhaps weren't putting restrictions on their drones or as many restrictions to go ahead and follow um, the way certain other manufacturers like DJI has, has uh, chosen to do. So you might start seeing more restrictions in models from manufacturers in the future, especially makers of the GPS ones, just because they don't want to step on toes when it comes to the FAA standards. Um, it also lets the FAA set really arbitrary requirements, um, including, you know, markings that might be impractical. You know, what, what kind of markings are you going to have on a 5-inch on a, a, a FPV quad? I mean, uh, it also includes this remote ID stuff. You know, not a lot has been defined regarding remote ID, but we know that it basically may include a transponder, okay? And that it would need to be affixed to all of our drones to transmit a signal that the FAA could be used to identify us. You know, for obvious reasons, this isn't really practical in many cases or really even necessary. You know, why do I need a transponder on an FPV racing drone that I'm just going to fly it under 100 feet or so in an area where, say, there's no airports with even within five miles? So, you know, the, the pri there are privacy concerns galore about the transponder issue, and I don't even feel like I need to get into that. And also, who's going to pay for that? You and I are going to pay for that. We're, we're, we're all going to have to pay for that if it comes to it. So these are all things that need to be considered, or will need to be considered potentially at some point. Um, it also, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end flying above 400 feet above ground level for hobbyists, period. For multi-rotors, this may not matter as much, but keep in mind, this is for all RC aircraft. It's definitely going to kill people who fly sailplanes and certain wings and other fixed-wing aircraft who, for decades, have been able to fly that stuff safely uh, at AMA fields and other designated places, and there's really no notch that's been carved out for them. So, that's done. That will be done. I, you know, I also don't see anything that affords the hobbyists any kind of exceptions to fly above 400 feet either, as well as, you know, as such commercial flyers do. So we seem to be pretty much stuck. Like, for example, I know a commercial flyer, if they need to fly up a structure, they can if they need to get a shot of it, but I don't know that we have that for hobbyists. So we've got a hard line 400 foot law now. Before it was just a guideline, now it is a law. So what can we do about any of this going forward? Uh, not much, I'm afraid. Someone needs to come up with a group who will speak for the hobbyist, for the little guy. It's certainly not going to be the AMA, I believe. It was supposed to be, but they have obviously been shoved aside. The big problem here is that the 0 to 400 foot airspace is very valuable commercial airspace for companies like Amazon, UPS, FedEx, Google. You see where I'm going with this. They want their commercial aircraft in that space. Make no mistake that most of this is not just about creating rules and regulations that would truly foster safety. But there's serious commercial interest in the United States to have you know, this airspace dedicated to corporations and other logistics companies who do package delivery or other commercial operations with drones. I don't know what we can do to prevent what I believe will eventually be the end of hobby flight entirely unless you own very private property somewhere or only fly toy grade models that wouldn't come under their jurisdiction. Or if you just stuck to micros like tiny whoops and uh, like little little small kind of drones. I'd love to hear from you guys about what you think. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening. If there's anything inaccurate that I've said, please feel free to point it out. These were just my thoughts and really feelings on the whole subject. As for me, I'm still going to be flying, trying to help everybody in the hobby here and on YouTube, and doing the reviews, and still just trying to have fun because, you know what, life is too short to spend every single day stressing about this subject.
But we do need to talk about it, though, because I think this is just the beginning, and it's a question of when, not if. Almost everything gets un- ended up getting taken away from us hobbyists with the demise of 336. This marks a turning chapter for models, model aircraft in the United States. It really does. So unless we get some representation, I don't know what's going to happen. But for now, we still have time to do something. We just have to figure out what it is. All right. That's it, guys. I, once again, I appreciate you for listening. And as always, have a great day.